Hi and welcome back. Today we're looking at solving linear functions. I don't know why I read the titles out because they're there on the screen, but hey, let's continue forward. Those of you who are in my lessons, yes, the standard is that you are going to be asked very much to do these questions here on solving linear equations, which come from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, a fabulous little series. If you're out there in the internet land, hi, welcome, how are you? You completely ignore the questions that I ask you to do because you probably won't have the textbook. But, you know, strap in and let's have a look and see what solving linear equations is all about. Now, in previous lessons, we have looked at how to multiply, divide, add and subtract some pretty funky and, as I say, they're horrendous looking algebraic fractions. But why would we need to do this? Now, do you remember Barry? Yes, Barry has to be kept in a job. So he is there very much trying to find all of the ways he can confuse us. And the best way for him to do that is through the subject of obliga. Oh, sorry, algebra. Now, true story, I actually teach lower down in the school a subject called obliga. Why do I teach obliga? Because many people, when they do algebra, get really confused. And then they sort of go, oh, I can't do this and give up. When you teach obliga, which just happens to be algebra spelled backwards, then they sort of go, oh, this is a new subject, and actually suddenly realize they can do it. Now, basically speaking, most of what we deal with tends to actually relate to graphs. Believe it or not, most of the equations that you actually have will have some form of graphical representation. So, to the, for the moment, we're going to deal with graphs of straight lines. Barry, because he likes to change things, actually calls things linear expressions. This is an example of a linear expression, 3x plus 5. This is an example of a linear expression, 5x minus 2 and 12 minus 6x is also an example of a linear expression. Why is it linear? Well, basically, the quick way to tell is what is the highest power of x? Well, in this situation, it says 6x. You're going to turn and say, well, there's no power. What do you mean by power? Well, a power is a floaty number. And if we don't write a floaty number, then it has a power of 1. Likewise here, that is 5x to the floaty 1 and 3x to the floaty 1. Now again, doesn't matter whether the 3x is at the front or at the back, they're just trying to trick us. And you're going to say, well, when wouldn't it be a floaty 1? Well, there we go. If we have 3x squared plus 2x plus 6, now we can see the highest floaty number, or the highest power of x is actually 2. And in that situation, the graph isn't linear. It actually turns out to be something called a quadratic. Remember that word. You're going to use a lot of those in year 11. All right, so as you notice, say here, you'll notice that the power of x is always 1. Different from quadratics, which have this floaty 2, cubics have floaty 3, quartics floaty 4, and that's just a few of them. They can go on to infinity and beyond. Now, when we put an equal sign in, we're actually trying to solve the function. We're trying to find a specific x value for that makes the y value correct, or we're trying to find a specific x value that makes the y value correct, because we can do things backwards. Now, we can only solve an equation. Do you remember? An equation is something like 3x plus 2 equals 6. That's an equation because it has an equal sign in it. If I just had 3x plus 2, that's called an expression. There's not very much we can do with that particular expression. But if I had 3x plus 2 plus 4x, for example, then we can collect like terms and end up with 7x plus 2. We've made the expression simpler. We've simplified the expression, but we still don't know what that value of x is. So. Here are some basically shortcuts and rules and tricks to help you follow how to solve these type of things. Now these are the way I do them. Lots of people teach them in lots and lots of different ways. I have to say that I particularly dislike fractions with a passion. So, you know, I do things slightly differently. But here we go. Example one. Is x squared plus 3x equals 2 a linear expression? Well, basically, no. First thing is it's not an expression because it's an equation, it's got an equals in it, but actually it's not linear either. Now, why is that? Because x squared plus 3x equals 2. What's the highest power of my floaty number? Well, this is 3x to the floaty 1. That is x to the floaty 2. Don't really care about the 2 at the moment, because that's not what it's asking me to do. And I find out that actually, no, it's neither linear, or if I'm being honest, an expression. What about this one here? Example two is 3x over 2 equals x plus 4, a linear expression. I'm going to ignore this word expression because that's ridiculous. All right, again, it's not an expression because it's got an equal sign in it. But if we have 3x on 2 equals x plus 4, 
For it to be linear, if you remember, the highest floaty power is one. Now you're gonna turn and say, well there's two X's there. But yes, while there's two X's, there's a floaty one there and a floaty one there. So is the highest power of floaty number on the X one? Yes it is. So actually, smiley face, this is in fact linear. Whoa! But why have we got X's on both sides? Because Barry's been at it again. Come on Barry, give us a break. Why? Because we can do this and we can simplify and move things around. Example three, wow, we're moving through these at pace. Now solve 3x plus 6 equals 15. How are we going to solve 3x plus 6 equals 15? Well first things first, we've got an equal sign, so that's good, we can solve. 3x plus 6 equals 15. Now I have to say, as far as I'm concerned, when a number and a letter, and the letter is what we're trying to find, are stuck together, we leave them alone. Right? Don't touch them until the very, very end. How many terms do we have here? Now actually, the trick to algebra is knowing how many terms you have and what to do with them. So because I've got one, two terms, and remember anything that's separated by a plus or a minus turns it into a whole new term, then I'm going to leave this term alone and I'm going to deal with the plus 6. How do I get rid of a plus 6? I take away 6 from both sides. So taking away 6 from both sides, do I have one term equals another? I should go go. And so between the 3 and the x is a kissy kissy. And to undo a times by 3, I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. It gives me x equals 3 and we are laughing <laughs> all the way to the bank. Well, probably not the bank because we're not going to make any money out of this. Example four, exactly the same idea, but what are they doing? Now they're trying to trick us again. You'll notice, for example, three, we had the three x at the beginning, which made it plus three x. Now, we don't normally write the pluses at the start of equations. We don't need to. We just know they're there, which I suppose is a little bit misleading, isn't it? Because one minute it's there, one minute it's not. Hide, there, hello, no, hello, 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 I'm there, no, I'm not. So in this situation, they're trying to trick us because in this situation, it's minus 3x. They're trying to put that minus sign in. Now, some people I know will put the minus 3x at the beginning, plus 10 equals minus 5, just so that it looks a bit clearer. We tend to get into patterns with maths, and so we tend to sort of say, well, if I can know the x term at the beginning, I just sort of pass a pattern. I, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. This is one way of doing it, and I'll show you the way that I tend to do it as well and it's totally up to, do, uh, up to you which way you do it. So, what am I doing? These are stuck together, there's two terms, so let's get rid of that plus 10 by taking away 10 from both sides. So minus three gets left on its own. I get minus five minus 10, so minus three x is equal to minus 15. I've got one term equals one term, so now I can just split them up between the three and the x's of times, so x becomes minus 15 divided by minus three, remember? It's uh, connected by a times, so we are going to divide both sides by minus 3. A minus and a minus makes a plus. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And Bob's your uncle. Thank you very much. Now, I don't tend to do it that way. I tend to do it slightly differently. Because I know that actually these minus signs can trick me, and they make me really confused. And I know the best way to turn a minus into a plus is actually to move it to the other side. Now, again, if you don't understand what I mean by moving it to the other side, look what happens if I add 3x to both sides. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. That gives me 10 on that side is minus 5 plus 3x. My negative 3x has now disappeared, and I very much turned it into a plus 3x. I like that. Now, obviously, I want the x term on its own. I've still got two terms. So I now want to get rid of this minus 5 by adding 5 to both sides. When I add 5 to both sides, that gives me 15 equals 3x. And so x is equal to 15 divided by 3. So x is equal to 5. Now you're going to turn and say, but that says 5 is equal to x. It doesn't actually matter which side of the equation you have x. By convention, we would then normally write that x equals 5, because otherwise you just mess it with my head. But generally speaking, it doesn't matter which side you've got the x's on, so long as you actually solve the equation properly. Here we go. Two ways of doing this one, believe it or not. There's always lots of ways of doing things in maths. There's the expanding brackets way. So I can actually expand my brackets by multiplying each term inside by what's outside. What do I get? 4x minus 12 is equal to minus 8. Well, this term here is positive, so I'm going to leave it where it is. 
There are two terms, so I'm going to get rid of that minus 12. I'm going to leave it by doing minus 8 plus 12. Right, I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So that gives me 4x is equal to 4, and so x is equal to 1. That's certainly one way of doing it, and I really like it. Now, as we get more complicated in maths, we need to turn around and find different ways of doing things, shortcuts, quicker ways of doing it. If I go back to this, 4x minus 3 equals minus 8, how many terms do I have on this side? Hopefully you'll just turn around and say 1. Yep. How many terms do I have on this side? 1. Brilliant. When you have one term on one side and one term on the other, we can actually start looking at, well, can I divide and multiply by stuff and blah, blah, blah. If you remember, between the 4 and the brackets is a kissy-kissy. What do I mean by kissy-kissy? Oh, there's a previous video. It's awesome. But... So that means I can actually get rid of that times by 4 by dividing both sides by 4. Now, it only works when I've got one term on one side and one term on the other. Okay, this only works effectively without making silly mistakes. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. That means that that disappears and I get left with this x minus 3. I can put it in brackets is equal to minus 8 divided by 4. Well, actually, there's no point having the brackets in now because there's nothing outside the brackets. I've got rid of it. It's, if anything, there's the number 1 outside the brackets, and 1 times anything is anything. So I get x minus 3, the brackets go. Minus 8 divided by 4 is minus 2. And actually, hello, I can now just add 3 to both sides to get my x on its own. It becomes minus 2 plus 3, so x is equal to 1. Now, again, this is actually quicker normally. It's just I've written out all of the working out for you just so that I can sort of explain the process. But, again, in that situation, I'd probably choose the second one to do rather than the first one. Can I do the same thing here? No, because how many terms do I have? I have one, two, three terms, including the thing on the right of the equals. So in this situation, can't do what I was just doing. There's no point dividing by 4 or dividing by minus 3 or any of that rubbish. We're just going to multiply out the brackets. So 4 times x, 4x. 4 times plus 2 is plus 8. Now, BFT, Barry's been at it. That minus 3, x minus 2, you have to be careful that you have a minus multiplied by a minus. If you don't pick up on that, you're going to get the wrong answer. It's going to go horribly, horribly wrong. So, minus 3 times x gives me minus 3x. And rubbing this out, minus 3 times minus 2 gives you plus 6 equals 17. Now, is that the end of the question? No, I've got an equal sign, so I'm able to solve this. So I'm going to collect like terms. So collect like terms. 4x minus 3x is x. Plus 8 plus 6 is plus 14 is equal to 17, and there we go, nice and easy. x becomes equal to 17 minus 14, or x becomes equal to 3. Yeah, happy with that? Yeah, me too, very good, very good, very good. Example 7, wow, I've just scrolled down the page, and I've apparently gone from example 8 to example 10. Really quite embarrassing for somebody who's a maths teacher and apparently can't actually add up consecutive numbers. Oops. Let's go back to example 7. Again, this is a shortcut. There's a trick in this. Now, whenever I have a fraction equals a fraction, life is just so awesome. Again, shown in a previous video, and there's lots of this stuff all through my channel that maybe I should highlight at some point. And I will, I promise. But what is the important stuff to note here? Right, well, x minus 4 over 2. I have a fraction equals a fraction. Remember, any whole number can be divided by 1. And when I have a fraction divided by a fraction or times a fraction equals a fraction, I can cross multiply to get rid of those bottoms off my fractions. So I would then end up with 1 times x minus 4, note the use of brackets, and 3 times 2. Well, 1 times anything is anything, so I get x minus 4 equals 6, and so x is equal to 10. Wow, funky! I oh, should think so. Again, there's lots of different ways of doing this, even if I go back to the beginning. What am I trying to get on its own? The x. Now, a lot of people say, well, can I move the minus 4 over? And I try to imagine this like a set of bunk beds. You cannot actually let the people off the top bunk before the people on the bottom bunk get off first. If you, if you, I mean, to be fair, if you try and let people, oh, people get treaded on and stare heads and crying and all sorts of stuff. And again, previous video, go and watch it, it's fabulous. So I want to get rid of the bottom, which is the same as a divide by 2. 
So if I get rid of a divide by 2, that leaves me x minus 4 on the top, and I get 3 times 2 on the other side. Remember, because how do you undo a divide by 2? You times both sides by 2. And there we go. We get x minus 4 equals 6. And once again, x equals 10. Two different ways of doing it. Just depends on which one you prefer. Now, knowing that, remember, we don't want to suddenly go diving on to sort of get all confused and stuff because let's go back to this question. x plus 1 over 3 plus 2 equals 9. So many people now go, ah, oh, I can just cross multiply. No, you can't. Because remember, to be able to do that, you have a fraction equals a fraction. And you're going to say, yeah, but I can turn it to 9 over 1. Yes, you can, but I don't have a fraction equals a fraction. And sadly, this plus 2 throws things. It doesn't quite work that way. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have to find common denominators. Yes, that's certainly one way of doing it. Now, I'm going to rub out this divide by 1. Anytime I see a fraction with a divide sign in it, and I don't like it, then I know the easiest way to undo a divide by 3 is to multiply, and I'm going to write in really bold letters here, everything, every single thing by 3. In this situation, to get rid of that divide by 3, I need to multiply everything by 3. Now, when I have x plus 1 divided by 3, that then disappears. When I multiply and divide by 3, it's the same as multiplying by 1. So that divide by 3 goes, leaving just the x plus 1 on the top. But then I have to multiply the plus 2 by 3, which gives me plus 6. And I have to multiply the 9 by 3, which gives me 27. Now that looks a lot nicer, don't you think? x plus 7 is 27, so x must equal 20. See what I'm doing there? Nice and easy. Get rid of that divide by 3 by multiplying everything by 3. The top gets left alone. Just make sure you multiply each of those terms by 3. Last two examples. What do you notice here? 2x plus 12 over 7. Remember, you are looking for patterns, for tips, for tricks, for things that look the same. Does a fraction equals a fraction? I should cocoa? Then that's lovely, because what I can just do there is cross multiply. So the 4 now crosses up onto this side and multiplies everything that was already there, hence the brackets. And the 7 crosses up and multiplies by that bracket, and hence the multiply. Right, 4 times 2x is 8x, plus 12, 24, 36, 48 is equal to 21x plus 35. Right, oh, I've got x's on both sides. It means I need to start moving things around. Now I'm going to actually leave the highest x's alone. So I've got the highest x's on there. I'm going to get rid of this 8x by taking away 8x from both sides. So that leaves 48 is equal to 21 minus 8 is equal to 13x plus 35. Right, on the x's on its own, so I'm going to get rid of this 35 or plus 35 by taking away 35 from both sides. Taking away 35 from both sides gives me 13 equals 13x. So x must equals 1. All right, it looked complicated. It wasn't. It was a fraction equals a fraction. And so I could move things around. And last example, thank you so much for sticking with me. If you have x on 2 plus 2x on 3 equals 7. Do I have a fraction equals a fraction? No, I don't. Uh, I do have two fractions which add together, which means I could use a common denominator if I wanted to. But actually, uh, actually, let's do it. I'm going to show you two ways. Let's do the common denominator. Now, the situation here is common denominator becomes 6 because 2 times 3 is 6. When I do the bottoms multiplied, I can actually do the tops multiplied. So that becomes 3 times x plus 4 times x equals 7. Collect like terms, simplify. 7x on 6 equals 7. I have a divide by 6 here. So how do I get rid of a divide by 6? I times both sides by 6. Yep, I'm going to times both sides by 6, which means this disappears, leaving me 7x is equal to 42. And so x just turns out to be 6. That is certainly one way of doing it. And in this situation, it was nice, it was beautiful, easy numbers to deal with. But um, later on, it might get quite tricky. How would I have done this? And I'm not saying it's any quicker, but x over 2x on 3 equals 7. I actually get rid of that 
divide by 2 first. So I want to get rid of this. So I'm going to multiply absolutely everything by 2. Now follow this through. That becomes x. That's the whole point. Oop. It's got to be a plus. I multiply all of this by 2. Now, when I do that, I'm becoming two lots of 2x on 3. I'm only multiplying the top number because 2 is the same as 2 divided by 1. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply the top together, multiply the bottom together. So that just becomes 4x on 3. And I have to remember to multiply everything by 2. So 7 times 2 is 14. Right? Well, that's got rid of one fraction. What do you reckon I'm now going to do? I'm going to get rid of my next fraction here. That's a divide by 3. So I'm going to times everything by 3. 3 times x is 3x. Plus, now remember, the reason I'm doing that is that disappears and just leaves the top. 4x equals 3 lots of 14. 14, 28, 42. 7x equals 42 and so x becomes equal to 6. Okay, there were basically 10 examples. Uh, I don't know why I missed number 9. I've always got something against the number 9. Just talking about solving linear functions. We talked about what a linear function was. We talked about how to move things around, divide times, add kissing, bump beds, the works. I'm done. Thank you very much for taking the time and watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S, guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy-to-use way.